you know, if you don't get your team on board with security, uh, you're never going to be able to implement it correctly because your staff's going to be undermining it. They're going to be trying to work around it all the time or complaining about it. Travis, good to see you. Good to see you too, man. Welcome back to another episode of uh, Let's Make IT Simple. This episode, we're we're talking about a, a trending topic, and um, it's trending for good reason. This is something that is a big deal right now, was a big deal last year, and it'll probably continue to be a big deal for quite some time. That is cybersecurity. We did a recent podcast talking about cybersecurity insurance. We've done some talking about hackers. Um, so we're going to delve a little deeper into this subject of cybersecurity and specifically for businesses, um, for companies who are concerned about that. They may have this question, how can I improve my cybersecurity? So that's the uh, uh, the title of this this episode how can you improve your cybersecurity? So, Travis, to start with, what is the number one thing, if you could, if you could kind of summarize it in one big thing that companies should do to improve their cybersecurity? Sure. So, I'm, I want to give you two answers to this. The truth is, the, the biggest thing you can do is have a, a trusted partner, somebody that you trust that you know is good at this that can help guide you through the process. Yeah, I can't emphasize that enough. That is absolutely the most important thing to have here is somebody who can actually walk you through the process. But I think some people at home might be saying, well, what's the one tool or thing that I could do in my environment? And, you know, um, there's a lot of different things that need to be done. There's a lot of tools that need to be implemented. Um, there's a lot of best practices that need to be implemented. But if you had to, if I had to pick just one tool or one service to enable in your environment, and we've done videos on this before, I'd say enable multi-factor authentication on all of your accounts everywhere possible. So most important thing, get a partner to walk you through the process because it's complicated. But if you're just asking this question based on, well, what's the one thing I can turn on? Hey, turn on MFA. That's a nice answer. Kind of kind of an on the spot question, but, um, MFA, obviously important that we've talked about it multiple times. Um, but since you, you talked about, or you mentioned tools, um, MFA being one, being, a, a the number one and a simple one that people can implement. What are some other tools that businesses can implement to improve their cybersecurity? Sure. So there's, uh, dozens of types of tools and there are hundreds of options available. Um, and so there, I could spend a long time answering this question, but how about I, I'm just going to pick a few that I think are really important for people to evaluate to see if they have them in their environment already. Uh, everybody's familiar with antivirus. Uh, next gen an antivirus specifically is what you're looking for. Um, but you should definitely have that in place. Okay. That is important. Uh, but in addition to that, I would say, again, multi-factor authentication, which can be can be um, enabled in more than one place. So there is free multi-factor authentication, like for Microsoft Office. Uh, you can enable that on your uh, email, and that's just going to cost you, you know, time, somebody's time to set that up. It's not actually a paid service. But there's also multi-factor authentication applications that you can use on your virtual private networks, your VPNs. You can also use on your desktop. So when you go to log into your desktop, you're prompted for that second factor. Uh, one really popular brand is Duo. I believe they're owned by Cisco at this point. They, they bought them. That's a very popular multi-factor authentication. I know there's another one called Auth Anvil, I think is what it's called, uh, that's owned by, uh, I think, Kaseya. But there's, there's dozens of different options out there. In addition to that, we should talk about EDR or MDR, which is endpoint detection and response or managed detection and response. These are similar to antivirus. They're not the same. Sometimes your EDR might integrate into your antivirus. But what these are are agents that sit on your machines that look for malicious behavior. And then they respond by either isolating that, uh, the activity that's going on, um, and in addition to that, you know, they do that, or in addition to that, they also alert a human being, either yourself or maybe you've got a secure operation center somewhere that's getting this information that, hey, something's going wrong. And then they allow that secure operation center to either intervene on your behalf or that secure operation center might send you remediation steps to say, 
go ahead and take these steps to, um, you know, clean up your machine because we see this activity. But it also gives you really good information as to what happened, how it happened, why it happened, really good forensics. So these days, antivirus is not just enough. You want like an EDR or an MDR. And again, the, the big difference between the E and the M, uh, EDR, you're probably taking all the, the alerts yourself and taking care of it internally with your own staff. MDR, it's managed. You've got a team that's actually intervening on your behalf and and, and actually uh, responding to those alerts instead of you doing it. So that's the, ne- that's the next thing I would bring up. In addition to that, things like DNS firewalling, right? Actually having agent-based DNS firewalling on your laptops. Uh, so if you are in a, let's say, free Wi-Fi environment, like trying to get on uh, get on a website there and you click on a link and that's a malicious link. The DNS firewall service, maybe they they detect that this is this is a phishing attempt or a malicious link taking you to someplace you shouldn't be, it'll block it. Also they can be used for content uh, management as well. So you can block things like gambling or terrorism or pornography or torrent sites, places to like share files and things like that and download uh, stolen movies and music and things like that. So you can, you, you can set it up however you want, but I would say DNS filtering. And then last two things I would bring up, uh, SIM it's S I E M it's security information and event management. A SIM is a very uh, big monitoring stack that looks at your network traffic on your switches, your routers, as well as the traffic on your servers and workstations, similar to what an EDR does, but much more complicated. And it's going to look for this malicious behavior. And it's going to either be set up to report it back to you or to a secure operations center that's managing it for you or to your managed service provider. Maybe it's sending it to them. And then of course, backups. You got to have really good backups. So these are just a, a handful of tools. There are a lot of other things out there that you can do in addition to this encryption. There's obviously all the best practice you want to implement in your environment, setting up your firewalls. Uh, there's a there's a lot, but those are just some basic ones. Like you said, there there's a lot there, a lot of tools. Um, and that was a lot of acronyms and nerd talk, smart people talk. So <laughs> that goes back to the first thing you said, right? Having a partner having someone that you you trust that knows this stuff that helps you to implement it. Um, Cause I can imagine myself, you know, as a business owner, if I were um, thinking about trying to implement these things on my own, that would be overwhelming. Right. So um, great suggestion on, on that, that number one thing that they can be done, have a, have a great partner. Now you also talked about the human element to this, that there's certain things that a uh, that humans have to do, the individuals have to do, uh, to make sure that they're uh, taking care of their cybersecurity. So, how can a company make sure they're doing what they need to do, or their employees are doing what they need to do as individuals uh, to to make sure that their company is secure? Yeah, the weakest link in the chain here for security for any company is people. Right. We're too trusting. We're too friendly. We want to we want to believe these emails that we're getting are legitimate. We do. When the CEO of a company says, hey, I would like you to go buy a thousand dollars worth of Google Play gift cards and scratch the back of them. Give me the numbers so I can reward a bunch of employees with some, you know, with some gifts here at the office. We want to think oh, the CEO really did send us that email and we're really doing a good thing helping out here. But that's not what's going on. The CEO isn't going to send you an email like that. That kind of uh, scam happens constantly. So making sure the people at the office are trained, they know what to look for, that they're familiar with what phishing attempts look like, they're uh, familiar with basic security and basic hygiene, you know, uh, in the digital world. So they understand how to create a good password. They understand how to use a password manager. They're on board with it. You know, if you don't get your team on board with security. Uh, you're never going to be able to implement it correctly because your staff's going to be undermining it. They're going to be trying to work around it all the time or complaining about it. And so the most important thing to getting to getting your people on board, make sure the CEO, the people at the top, the management are 100% on board and are embracing it. And then culturally, they're bringing that down to their staff and then get people trained. So get them security awareness training. Have them learn what it's like to be fished. In addition to that, Set up some simulations. There's a lot of different softwares out there that will simulate phishing 
attempts. Microsoft has a uh, software that'll do this built into Microsoft 365. There's an additional fee for it, I believe, but it's part of their stack. Webroot has one. There's a there's a dozen different companies that do this. Set up phishing simulations and actively test your employees. Send them a malicious email that you know it's not really going to do anything, but it's it's an attempt to see if they'll click on it. And if they do click on it, you you now know, okay, this this employee, that employee, they're the ones that you know made the mistake. Let's give them additional training. Let's show them, hey, how they should have responded to this and what they should have looked for that would have indicated that this was not a real email. So set up training and set up simulation. It's it's imperative that you train your people and it's imperative that you instill a culture of security in your company. That sounds like a great topic for a future podcast, um, going into phishing and how uh, simulations and whatnot can be set up to um, to avoid uh, some of these these big phishing attacks that we've we've seen and we've heard of um, on the news. So another question um, that that I was thinking about and, and maybe some businesses may have is, is this something that a business should go through their um, through an IT company, through an MSP um, for, or is this something that they should um, try to do themselves? It, you know, you mentioned the trusted partner. Should they go with another type of company? Who should they be looking to uh, for some of these solutions that you mentioned? Sure. So if you have internal IT, these are conversations you want to have with your internal staff and you want them to tell you what what steps they're taking to secure the environment and, and ask them, what recommendations do you have? You know, as a business owner, don't be afraid to ask these questions. I know like a, a lot of business owners are um, concerned about cost, of course, which is important, but you know, they may not be that as curious as they ought to be as business owners. So ask your internal IT. If you don't have internal IT, well then who is your, who is your trusted partner? Who is it you're working with? If you're not working with anybody and you think everything's okay, essentially where you're at is you're, it's like you're in a vehicle. You don't have, the seatbelt on you haven't checked the brakes you know you've done no maintenance this car ever and you're saying to yourself hey we're safe because we've never crashed before so since we haven't crashed and died everything's okay but really if you don't have help in this arena then you don't even know what you don't know so yeah i would say find somebody you can trust to start talking to them listen to these videos listen to there's other channels out there that can help you with this too on youtube listen to that information start taking it in but but the biggest thing you can do is find a partner to lead you through it. And and then in addition to that, something I'd like to bring up, we just did a, a video on this recently, which is cyber insurance. You know, your cyber insurance provider, if you have a good one, they're going to send you a questionnaire that says, have you done all these things? And it's going to be several of the things we talked about and other things we didn't talk about today. And you, you're you going to want to be able to answer, yeah, I've, I've implemented these different best practices and these different solutions in my environment. Once you get the cheapest rate and two, um, so that you actually are not likely of actually getting attacked in the first place or not successfully being attacked. So get a partner to help you through the technology. Find a partner to help you with the insurance piece. Uh, evaluate your environment and start implementing these solutions. And again, be more curious as a business owner, care more about it, care more about security. It's your livelihood. This company is what pays for your house, for your kids, for your future, protect it. Great advice, Travis. Appreciate it. So, um, you know, whether it's your, your IT service provider internally, Externally, uh, cyber security insurance. There's a lot of resources um, that that people can uh, can can rely on uh, or look into uh, for this. And also, like you mentioned, <laughs> I guess it starts with with caring and, and and doing the research yourself as a business owner. So great stuff. Uh, now we we get to the part where we uh, kind of summarize everything and and we do what the name of this uh, podcast is called keeping IT simple. So let's summarize it all. 30 seconds or less. Travis, how can a company improve their cybersecurity? So number one, get a trusted partner, somebody that can walk you through the process. Make sure that they are implementing best practices. Uh, make sure they're implementing the right tools like multi-factor authentication, endpoint detection response, SIMs, backups, uh, implement training, implement a culture of security in your company 
and it, just in case everything goes wrong, get some good insurance in place to help bail you out and pay for it if it all just if it all just goes wrong.